Fifty-four pounds, sixteen shillings and ninepence. Reasonable. Let's call it a uh, hundred and eighty with the tip. I'll give you a check for ninety then. He'll give me a check for a hundred and fifteen. The home comforts. Ah. Uh. I didn't see her making herself up at the table. How did, how, how did she come to leave her lipstick? I always do. So they can ring back from where they're taken. Ask about what they've left and give a number. Should it be found? I see. Why? Future reference. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the little floozies. Hmm? Well, standard practice. Uh, got a clip. Have you no clips of your own, Anderson? No, darling. And I have no intention of filling in four civil service forms to get any. Takes but a moment. And subservience. It would also take but a moment for you to go to Sir John's room via your passage door and his instead of to and froing through my room. Yes, but think of the secretarial time you'd waste patrolling the passage so you'd know when to plug your ear to Sir John's keyhole. What would it be to hear, Henderson, of professional interest? You have no official duty in this department. Oh, well, official duties seem neither here nor there in this department. Or oh, is that what yours are? Here is Sir John's private secretary one moment, and there, informing on him to Lord Bly the next. Lord Bly, as it happens, has asked me to inform, as you put it, but not on Sir John. You. What, he wants to know, are you doing in this department? Patience, pussy. Patience. Ah. He's in Madrid for another day, then. Sir John, yes. How did you hear? Well, you putting letters on his desk and then sitting on it. Which is a nicer sight than the other usual indication of his absence. Dowling sitting in his chair. Is that immediate attention stuff? Mm -hmm. I'll put this on top, will you? No, 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 on top. It is on top. Till you plonk something else on it. I finished plonking. I wasn't leaving them on his desk knowing how he feels about clutter. Um, Jill. Look, uh, I'll be out of town tomorrow, so see that he puts that through fastish. Expenses? Not having seen it, how did you know? You opened the door for me. Oh. Uh, supplies, please. Out of clips, too. This is Sir John Wilder's private secretary. Could you send up a key for the door between rooms 617 and 619, please? I shouldn't ask for one if one were in the lock, should I? And the forms will be here when the key comes. How many forms for a plug of dynamite? Oh, Jill, would you get me the file on Catalonia irrigation, please? It's in front of you, towards the bottom. Uh, Lord Bly would like it. Oh, did you get it for him or for Sir John? For Sir John? I'll tell him it's upstairs with Lord Bly. Oh, Lord Bly would like this at the trot. 
Why can't he send his own personal assistant down for them? He might outgrade Sir John, but I outgrade her. He prefers the look of you. I do believe the old gentleman would let you sit on his desk. Since I should ask you something. Should it be, uh, what is the matter? Too many people are opening doors for me. Just follow your nose. You won't come to any harm. Where? I left it on top. No? Yes. Mr. Darling also left a thing or two. It'll be a bit down now, I suppose. I think you'll find it to be a bit up now, Jill. How much was it for? I didn't look, but as he's in a hurry well, What was it spent on? I didn't look, Sir John. You know all his appointments? Only as much as I know yours, which is not all of them. And he didn't say where he'd be out of town today? No, nor when he'd be back. Shall I ring round on the off chance? Uh, he'll be in tomorrow if he's waiting on heavy expenses. Good morning, Sir John. Didn't know you were here. You come straight from the airport. Good morning. You lost something, Jill? Yes, something left. Don't on... worry, it will turn up very soon. I was going to leave this for you. Lord Bly didn't know you were in either. He asked me to memo you he'd like to see you the moment you were. Mm. As I said, very soon. Go to hell. <laughs> That's where I suggest you send Henderson. I'm not dismissing him and I'm not letting you. Well, the Prime Minister wants his head. Has he heard of Henderson? Heard what? Of his existence. Is that what you tattle about on your stately visits to Downing Street? Henderson? Oh, you can see that where affairs... <coughs> where affairs of state are concerned, Henderson is a person of insignificance. He won't be missed. I concede that he is unlikely to engage the Prime Minister's interest. <laughs> Whatever does, on that score, none of the staff would be missed. Not even your... Oh, no, I'm sorry. My private secretary. Downing Street requires Whitehall to show willing, John. The civil service must cut expenditure. Uh, the Prime Minister have given me one month to do my bit. I'm giving you one week. I didn't know a general election was so close. <laughs> Usual whiskey. No, save your tibble for your foreign salesman. That's the only tax concession which is allowed on entertainments nowadays. And I hope Henderson's dinner guests last Tuesday were foreign. Very foreign. 230 pounds worth foreign. That's the expense claim. His expense claims come to me, and so they should. Well, you were away. He must have been impatient. You know, I always thought that you were too lenient with him, John, and uh, today's little sample is really disturbing. Today's is pennies. Pennies for what? For whatever it says. Well, it says for entertaining, nothing more. Only the bill itself tells me the number of people entertained. Ten. Ten into 230 goes 23 times. I have spent more, and you have tried. I'm a minister. You're an ambassador. Henderson is neither. Indeed, according to our permanent civil servants, it's difficult to say what he is here. That's why he's so often able to do things for me that they can't hear. Oh. So he entertained these people for you. Who the hell else? And you can tell me who they were and why they were. And as usual, the result in my monthly report. I'm your minister. Then stop behaving like a tuppenny halfpenny accountant. You are ignorant of this claim, John. So incompetently ignorant that you don't even know that Henderson is only claiming a half. And obviously he didn't have the guts to go the whole hog, so he's claiming only 115 pounds. And then, to explain the incomprehensible fact that the bill is more, much more, he adds, and I quote, balance met by private sort. What are you complaining about? The department's quits in. Uh, I'm complaining, John, about a man who, um, who adds uh, 50 pounds onto an expense claim and, um, <clears throat> you know, I quote, added expenses, 50 pounds. Uh, and here, in a place where, you know, you have to fill in five or six forms to get a, a ninepenny ballpoint. 
This is the ninepenny one. What do you want, Caswell, really? His head, mine, or both? Or do you want advance warning of what I've asked him to do for me? So if the results look like being good, you can tell the Prime Minister you've told me to do it for you. This claim, John, what are you going to do about this claim? I'm going to frank it for payment. As a birthday present? Oh, last Tuesday was his birthday. Wednesday was mine. In happier days, I agreed with him. It was the one thing that he'd always be ahead of me. Don't go, John. I don't like sick rooms. This has become one. I'm instructing accounts to refuse all claims made by Henderson unless endorsed by me. And uh, as for that claim, I'll endorse it only when I know the identity of the private source. And I'm satisfied that Henderson shared the expense on official duty. Yes. Mr. Kenneth Bly is here, Lord Bly. Who? Your son, Lord Bly. My son? Why is he here? Shall I say you are engaged at present? Um, uh, uh, please ask him to wait. Oh, I don't hear from him for two years, and then he presents himself like the prodigal son. <laughs> for nerve, he and your Henderson will be hard to tell apart. They already are. Hmm? Anybody you go for, as you are going for Henderson, is today's substitute for Kenneth. Because at the green age of 36, he got off his bended knees, kicked you in the parental pants, and went his own way. Stay out of my domestic affairs, John. You haven't had any for two years. That's your trouble. No son to boot around the nursery, and in search of one, you've wandered into second childhood. Much good, did it? do can to go. Much good. So you hope. You have to. To see him standing on his own two feet would knock you off your own. Uh, John! John. Yes, Lord Bly? Uh, Send my son in. He's gone, Lord Bly. Can you see this person, Sir John? He hasn't an appointment. He's outside. He wouldn't say his business, only that he was here as a private source. I have one telephone call to make, Kenneth. I'll give you two minutes, John. That's one more than I just gave Father. Good morning. I believe you specialize in Balkan dishes. Yes, but only at night. In the day we sleep, particularly in the morning. I, I, I may want to entertain a Yugoslav diplomat. A Yugoslav diplomat would not be entertained here, merely politically insulted. Why, well, are you uh, Bulgarian? Worse, Albanian. At least the dishes are. Thank you.
Come along. Well, well, well. Very nice. Uh, no, 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 thank you. I stopped morning drinking. Oh, six months ago. I didn't. Then you look remarkably undeteriorated after all these years. Was your concern health, morality, or economy? Is that the impression that father spread that I'm on my office? Do you see a lot of your father still? Nothing of him still. How could he get an impression to spread then? Well, he wouldn't receive me just now, so he must be sure I need help. He'd help you like a shot, Kenneth. He always did. Oh, provided I asked for it while licking his boots, I always find it difficult to articulate in that posture. Then articulate about the Albanians. Hmm? Tuesdays, Albanians. Henderson's told you. Should he not have done? No, well, I mean, he's out of town today and you were uh, yesterday. He habitually leaves reports. Not if they'd excite your private secretary. However, this time he risked leaving an expense claim. He had to. You put it through. I have just got back. Oh, because we were relying on you to have made it a fait accompli. Oh, do speak English. Not that I don't understand French, but I'm not sure that you do. Besides, the subject is Albanian. And they want to buy British. And the British won't sell to them. I'm sorry? We have no trade, no relations with Albania, nor will we have, till an important debt is settled. Four and a half million pounds awarded by the International Court of The Hague about the sinking of a British destroyer. In the Corfu Channel in 1946. I've heard there were signs of a thaw. Ah, the ice is as thick as ever. Even on a British-built motorway in Albania? Where did you hear that? I'm still in business, John, making roads. Yeah. And as I see, off the wagon again. And hardly perceptible on the stock exchange. My company's shares have held steady since July. At one and two, power is two and six. Well, they'll look up when you pass Henderson's claim. When will things look up for me? Um, when the Prime Minister notices that acting upon your own initiative and not father's, You've enabled Britain and Albania to get over their sulks and talk to each other. Departmentally, the initiative was Henderson's, wasn't it? And externally mine. But, as father used to say, in business, whenever he took the boardroom applause for what you'd done, to endorse the initiative of a subordinate is to exceed it, because it's to act from a larger responsibility. So, endorse Henderson's claim and you'll get more out of it than he will. Shall I tell you what you'd get if your father, my minister, sniffed a fiddle? Nothing from the government should your road reach a dead end, granted that it ever started. What? You have a small, broken-down company which could handle maybe the verges on a footpath from a backyard door to an outside loo. The Albanians want roads. So, you have to swing in bigger men, a consortium. Now, what big British company is going to risk money in Albania? What government is going to allow them till that four and a half million is paid? What's more, while Albania follows the red Chinese line, they are out not only with us, but both sides of European communism. Any day, Russia may decide to squash them. And what better excuse than that the West were building military roads out there? So, if you want a British company to join you in your desperation flutter, you've got to get me to get the government to underwrite you against financial loss. Then can't you? No. From this nook in Whitehall, only your father can. And of course, I could go straight to the Foreign Secretary and tell him about this. Piddling highway. Piddling? Piddling! Population of Albania is one and a half million, scratching a living at subsistence level. And do you think your father would risk a business gamble in Albania, not to say with you? I thought you'd gathered that it suits us both to keep him right out of it. And I thought you'd gathered that he can't be kept out of it if you want government backing. You've expressed the necessity admirably. What you've not done is sign. Is this it? Put that bloody thing down. No, 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 no. Put it through, John, and then you can say this to the government. 
My father cannot express a ministerial opinion on an enterprise in which his own son is privately engaged. So he's left the matter entirely to you. Your father would say, having exercised his renowned impartiality of judgment, that he decided that his own and only son's company was too small, too unsuccessful, too badly managed to take part in so difficult an enterprise. So he persuaded the consortium to drop him. And so he would do if you wouldn't lick his boots as you were brought up to do. Would you lick his boots again, Kenneth? I prefer to stuff this down his throat. See, I'm the private source. I spent money. Henderson would testify. The external initiative was mine. It's a hundred and fifteen pounds, Kenneth. He'd see that you were restituted with one flick of a ninepenny ball. It point. is three months of travel, negotiation, risk. And, and, with the encouragement of this department, because a member of it, Henderson, spent state money while I spent private. Henderson spent his own money, unless I put this through. But that's the point, John! We both thought you'd have signed it by now. I've signed in ignorance. You were in Spain. That's ignorance. Oh. You don't trust Henderson. You caught father's mania. Nothing will work unless you start it. Don't you believe I did? What? Start it. I trust Don. Have you gone so far away from your dad that you're no longer his son? Trusting him never paid. Why should trusting you? Because I thought you'd put that through already. I called on him this morning. Do you believe that? Yes. It was to tell him that I'd done him in the eye and there was nothing he could do about it. I trust you were mixing business with pleasure. Well, as it happened, I was able to mix nothing with anything. He wouldn't see me. Well, don't worry, Kenneth. Henderson will get his expenses. Uh, when will you see the Board of Trade about my guarantees? Hardly today. I haven't met the Albanians yet. Indeed. If they exist, when can you arrange that for me? Henderson's fixed you up an appointment tomorrow. Before you go arranging things for me, before I request them, young Kenneth, understand this. I don't want you going up to your father and knocking him about. Do you still share the same doctor? Why? When a man of Caswell's age starts to fade in a position of power, he begins to expose a very quick flashpoint. I should find out how quick that flashpoint is before you provoke him. I think it's so quick that it might go up before he stops to think. I don't believe you. You fail to sound delighted. It doesn't suit me to have a fading minister liable to blow up at any minute and blowing me up with him just because his son is being cheeky. Give that to my personal assistant on your way out. Good. Cheers. Balkan Star, tomorrow then. Lunch. Who's the negotiator? His name's Vyulik. How did he get here? Washing the way most people do. Well, immigration won't allow Albanians in, especially Albanian envoys. Well, it's news to me. Better ask him yourself. Uh, I do have a dossier on him. Lincoln. Yes, Sir John? What do you know about a man called Migulik? He's the Albanian commercial attaché in Paris. How did he get into Britain, then? I can only think the name on his passport suggests someone else. Would well, you want him chucked out? I don't know. No, anything but, Lincoln. I've heard a lot about Darling. And if he mentions this to Father and you don't, Father will know what it's about. And he could, as you said, find it too much for his flashpoint. Because despite what you said about the piddling population, you know what's in this politically for whoever brings it off. You do, darling, an injustice. He is, in some ways, my most valuable instrument here. Good morning. Good morning.
Get me Foster, Cortland and Rebold. Yes, they're stockbrokers. I want a Mr. Keith Hollins, and only Mr. Hollins. If he's engaged, hang on for him. Mr. Kenneth Blythe said you wanted this. Yes? Oh, Mr. Henderson's claim, Sir John. I've had a formal memo from accounts. His claims are to go to Lord Blythe. We well, better tear that one up, Jill. No, well, I'll tear it up for you. Well, this will be personal, Jill. Yes, Sir John. Hello, Keith. Uh, I want you to buy until I tell you to stop. Buy Development Limited Ordinaries at uh, best. No, no, no. Not in my name. Buy them in the name of Don Henderson. Mm. Well, you can tip off who you like once you've got that lot at bottom. Mm. Bye. Lincoln. Yes, Sir John? Will you dig out all the figures on our trade dealings with Albania before the Corfu Channel incident? I'm going out to lunch. Will you see that they're on my desk by the time I get back? Dieting or snacking? I'm leaving room for the night. I always do, John, now when I dine in Downing Street. Is it a state occasion or are the two of you charting our road to ruin? Opposite you should mention a road. What do you know about Albania, John? I have a dossier about it on my desk at the moment. Mm, obviously, we're onto the same whisper then. I don't know. You get whispered to so much more often than mm. I do. Perhaps my hearing is better. I take it that you have had access to a dossier, too. Well, mine canvas is a possibility of a consortium, led by Budley and Sons, the Millington Combine, and Feesby Enterprises. Yeah, so does my dossier, I suppose. Hmm. Tell me, John, which of them do you think is the initiator? Feesby? No. The Combine? No. Then, um, Budley and Sons, we agree. I don't know which to admire more, your social round or your deductive powers. Hmm. Well, they can't risk going into Albania without government support, and that's not forthcoming unless, um, unless there's a settlement of Albania's debt to the United Kingdom. John, why are you so interested in this um, little rogue, Lee? Yes, you kept it very much to yourself. Is the inducement monetary? A little rake-off from Bugley and Sons? Little rake-offs have never interested me. Ah, uh, no, indeed. Well, perhaps you expect a grateful government to give you a peerage like mine. <laughs> Your peerage is a life peerage, a thing dead on delivery to be taken to the grave and buried with you. John, give me your overdue opinion of this Albanian project. Overdue? I only got my dossier just before lunch. Yes, well, it's urgent, you know. If British companies can't be found to build this motorway, the Albanians could go elsewhere. Well, what matters is who pays. If we support a British consortium in red Chinese Albania, in the end, it will be the British taxpayer who pays. You forget your memorandum to the Foreign Secretary the day after the Russians marched into Czechoslovakia. But from his silence, I'd concluded that the Foreign Secretary had forgotten it too. Well, he didn't read it. You forgot civil service procedure, John. The memorandum was automatically transferred to me. That explains the air of incomprehension which has hung over it ever since. I comprehended it, John. The Russians don't want a British road in Albania that Yugoslavia might use militarily the next time the Kremlin went crazy. The Americans do, but in the end the road would not go through. And in return, the uh, 
the Russians would be forced to make some uh, uh, concession to uh, Western uh, strategy. I mean, that's, uh, is that a fair summary of the memorandum? No, it also indicated the lack of any available Albanian negotiator, uh, a British consortium, and a government guarantee against financial loss. Not to mention a forgive and forget gesture by Britain about the Albanian four and a half million. Mm. Well, the Albanian negotiator is now available, John. His name is Majulik. And by the way, the Home Office would be interested in his passport. The British consortium we know about. Mm. And um, as for the government guarantee, I have already requested it. I'm sure the Prime Minister will be the first to compliment you. Oh, before the fish, I'd say. There's no minister he likes more than one who takes personal action. Oh, no. No Prime Minister he likes more, either. Well, now you can bend your mind to other things, John. I'll, um, I'll find something in a day or two. Um, would you like me to cancel my appointment with Majulik, then? Do you have one? Yes, tomorrow, luncheon, at the Balkan Star. Let it stand. I'll apologize to him for your absence. Should he notice it? Have you met him? Have you? No. But as they've let him out of Albania to represent them as an attaché in a western capital, Paris, you know, he may turn out to be a primitive, hard-line Marxist. They're the easiest. Pamper their prejudices, that's all. I'll deal with him, John. <laughs> yes? Is that you, darling? Yes, Lord Blind. Well, what's the matter with you? Got a cold? No, Lord Blind. Yeah, I'm free. Good. And come up for a drink first. Thank you. Well, neither of us know where. But I'll tell you what, grey roast beef and a bucket of brandy with just the two of you. He didn't say whether it was just the two of us, nor shall I. <laughs> John in. He asked for you at ten and he asked for you at noon. The last time he asked for someone twice, the someone was exiled to the Treasury. Oh. Then I mustn't keep the ambassador waiting. Nor I, the minister. Ah. I uh, spent yesterday at Coventry with old Budley and Birmingham. With the Combine and then Salford with Enterprises. Next time things go so well, boast before, not after. You were in Madrid. The last fool who said that had heard of the telephone, too. Yes. And uh, the last time I drew a blank on your Prague memorandum, you told me not to take up your time until I got results. Uh, you know, I... Wouldn't like to push a funicular through those mountains, let alone a motorway. Oh, Russians would cough up before it reaches the foothills. Forgotten your own strategy. I don't recall it including Kenneth Bly. Oh, come on, John. You warned me that none of the big boys would be so uninformed as to let themselves be used as bait in Albania. That's an awful lot of letters to spell Kenneth or to hide a helping hand. And if one of as a helping hand needs one, Bueller and the others, they'll come in now. You wrote them in, and you signed my expenses. Are you in a hurry for those expenses, Don? No. But as they're waiting, why should I let them depreciate? Well, they're planted. Just let them grow. They're what? Are you so short of a hundred quid that you can't drag your mind off the subject? My mind wasn't on the subject. But if it comes to that, John, yes, I am likely to be a little short. I mean, I've been entertaining all over England, and there's today's little frolic with Majulik to come. Kenneth told you. I'm host, again, your guest. Uh, Kenneth Shearing, of course. But Julie's guest, I'm not. But you go along. Play host. And telephone me immediately that Caswell louses up the whole deal. Caswell? Yes, Caswell. How did he get onto it? How indeed.
Hello, Bly. Hello, Bugley. Caswell. Uh, hello, Jim. May I introduce Sir James Bugley, Lincoln Dowling? How do you do? Is Sir John not coming? I've been asked to sit in for him. By you. Uh, will you uh, sit down, right. Jim? A drink? A uh, whiskey. And a large one for me, too, please. Uh, now, look, Jim, I'll come uh, straight to the point. Uh, you know, I can't give you or Feesby or anyone uh, a firm promise of government support, but I can guarantee that it's out of the question if you want to carry sprats. Gentlemen, may I present our guest of honour? Ah, Mr. Majulik. You're not him, he's the interpreter. Would you say that um, I'm Lord Bly? Mr. Mulik, you paragis, Lord Dimblai, Silia, Shemeka Naikun, Meopap. And what, what did all that mean? I told the negotiator you are very happy to meet him. Oh, yes, of course. As Chris Mapafans of the Koshin in the Rimakataman. He says he does not know you. A kuet, Sir Lord Bly. Yosef Mulik, ni Lord Ash, ni Lord, then ni Sir Ash, ni Sir. Mr. Mulik is unaccustomed to your system. He asked if you are Sir Lord Bly. Just Lord Bly. Look at when you Lord Ashton mine out the glad. You see the truth. Who asked Sir John Wilder? He asked where is Sir John Wilder? Perhaps you'd better say you're here as second string. Will you say that I'm the relevant minister and that I'd like him to meet Sir James Bewdley? I ask Ministry Percatus. James, this is uh this is Mr. Magulik. Uh Tetri asked Sir James Bewdley. How do you do? I asked I uh, Sir James Bewdley, a Bewdley Sunny Coventry. It is asked if Sir James Bewdley is of Bewdley and Sons of Coventry. Tell him he's Bewdley and there are no sons present here today. They're all in Coventry. Poch, by when go Coventry? No, more than it came in visit them, he met Faxus, take capitalist to bed. There can be no discussion in front of representatives of private capital. But Bewdley's in a public company. Would you say that that's quite understood? What? Uh, don't worry. Don't worry, Jim. You, you go out and wait. No, I'm staying. Uh, we did anticipate this, Sir James. It's merely protocol. When the representatives of states have agreed, you'll be called back in as an instrument of state. That went out even in Russia 15 years ago. Well, you're only asked to go out for about 10 minutes, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, will you have an aperitif? Uh, just sit him in front of a bottle of Schlibovitz and take it as natural that he drinks without invitation. You've never been to Albania. Have the brains to leave it to people who have. Get out! Get stuffed! Gentlemen, may I suggest that we all sit down and, uh, uh dis discuss... Mr. Katz, in one take your hand and you hear no Paris. The negotiator wishes to make it clear he could return to Paris immediately. I ask near me wish you didn't yet cover it. Or you didn't yet shed in your private governments? Or are contracts to be made with private companies? Do you understand? Minister, do you understand? Uh, what was that again? I said the negotiator wishes to make it clear that he could return to Paris immediately. Whether he goes or stays depends on what you propose. Is it an agreement between governments or are contracts to be made with private companies? Uh, between governments, naturally. You bloody old fool. The negotiator asks why you say naturally. When in Rome, Ministry Sugeron said, Could the Rome? Rome? Look, give me the Rome. Could you name it alone? When it appeared, but I'm here, Nick, the rest of me are delicate. The negotiator indicates that we're in London and that he had great inconvenience getting here. Uh, assure him that I know where we are in an area of compromise between ideologies. He's not permitted to compromise, but, uh, but I am. There will be uh, no agent's fees and um, no form of commission to any individuals. I didn't see when that it could get put up a compromise to the chest you nuk le yohani me ba compromisa. Kur se ai po, nuk ka perta pas as ni far pagese. Ai spre. Pigarish, teorina, de septa maxista. 
Negotiator says that you have accurately reflected sound Marx's theory. Hang on, I'll come with you. Yes, I would too, Kenneth, but I have a call to make. Okay, Odin said, Pritia, Philandaroya, Pertessen, Porundutiha, Dikutete. May I conclude the negotiator's remarks? And they are that he did not expect to encounter Marx's theory from the representative of a capitalist government. Uh, he thanks you for the extension of your hospitality, but uh, elects to, uh, to eat elsewhere. I'm afraid he regards our talks as concluded, Lord Bly. Zotty may leak. Is the purchaser's name on all these uh, Mr. Henderson's? Yes. Have your nominee, foreign, buy them from Mr. Henderson within the account, in fact, this afternoon. The price won't move before tomorrow morning. Your nominee then, then can take his certificates to uh, Switzerland. As soon as the price has risen probably by six shillings and he feels that they are at the top, he should dispose of a fractional proportion and remit the proceeds in cash to Mr. Henderson. Yes, that would obviate uh, capital gains tax. The remainder of the holding is to be transferred to a numbered account in Geneva and only realized on the principle of a numbered account. In your name, of course. Not in my name, of course. For a Swiss banker, you ask a British amount of questions. Who shall I advise as to the number? I shall advise the beneficiary as to the number. Uh, what is it? Yes? John, will you come up, please? Is it about Albania? Yes. Then you come down here, Caswell. This is the number. Thank you. Uh, dinner on Wednesday, then. And good afternoon now. Good afternoon. He won't come down. He went too far on that one. I know him. No, Kenneth, you merely hate him. And you don't? Not enough to finish him off in front of you. Dinner on Tuesday? You want me out to? Yes. Well, just one thing, John. If, as you say, I bought all those shares yesterday, do you want a check from me for your broker? Haven't you been with me long enough, Don, to realize that to buy and sell within the account will cover all your expenses and Kenneth's ten times over? Huh. Uh, well, the banker gets dinner, Kenneth gets dinner, don't I? How about tomorrow? No, I shall be dining with Dowling tomorrow. Who? He wants to make his peace, too. Well, what are you going to tell the Prime Minister? It isn't often he gets the chance to dine two times in a row with the same minister. He must have had his appetite thoroughly whetted last night. You even have spies in Downing Street? No. No, only here. You're on your own, Caswell, except for me. So, will you tell the Prime Minister tonight that you find the negotiations unexpectedly complicated because of standard practice and have handed them back to the initiator? You? No. Henderson. Standard practice. Hmm? You said standard practice. What standard practice? Ask yourself why the Albanians have tacked themselves onto Peking. Because it's ludicrous. Because they're five and a half thousand miles away from Peking and only a few yards away from Moscow's nearest puppets. Which means that their communism is no different from any other of their systems of government. It's just something to make the peasants suffer. And the Rakoff is, was, and always was something 
for the rulers. Nothing has changed. The king has gone, but only a few more people than usual are enjoying his throne. And the reward for people in positions of state hasn't changed either. Majulik wanted a bribe. An honourable, unexceptionable bribe. Not Marxist practice. Standard practice. Did you forget, John, that all your plotting with Albania will be so much hot air until they pay back the four and a half million? Taken care of, Caswell. But how? They haven't any money. Their friends have. Well, they haven't any friends except the Chinese, and they're hardly likely to pay back four and a half million, even in yen. Don't be so sure. No, no, it's unthinkable. Oh, the Chinese will jump at any chance of investing in anything which will sock the Russians. Well, you don't usually dabble in miracles, John. Henderson contacted the Albanians in Paris, where the Chinese are welcome. I think you ought to see this. It's pretty relevant. Are you there? He's been seeing a lot of the Chinese in Paris. The same Chinese who've been sounding out our people about a possible Albanian settlement and a British road there. So this whole idea was not initiated by us? No. Henderson was nobbled by the Chinese, not they by him. He is, of course, an amateur. It'll take him years to get used to the ways of diplomacy. This could be said about you, John. Don't gloat, Caswell. You can't kill the whole project just as simply as that. What do you think, darling? Well, as it's the Chinese who are making the running, we're naturally suspicious. They may genuinely want to use us to keep the Balkans safe from Russia. Equally, they may want to sour relations between us and America. Which a settlement in Yen would certainly do. Thank you, darling. You should have taken Dowling into your confidence before you let Henderson and my son waste their money. 